He shatter, shatter my vessel. Shatter the vessel. So they send someone on board to take us where to load. So we don't know that's what he wants to load. But we just followed instruction. So he took us to a jacket. Okay. We took it to a jacket. Okay. To load, but. Uh, we couldn't stay there for long, we just left there. When I called my boss that this is what is happening there. So my boss said I should leave there. So now on our way going back to our position of anchor. So Tantita boys, Tantita security now cross us. So that's what happened. How long has it been on this, on this vessel as a captain? Since last year. Last year. Yes. Now, where do you usually go to for your operation? This is my first voyage. Okay, but don't you know what you did is uh, in the family is for your poor people? Did you... I didn't know that is what we are going to load. The shatterer shattered my vessel. What is the name of the shatterer? Let him flow. Uwa. I know him as Uwa. Yes. I have 12, yes. Are they all Nigerians? Yes. 11 Nigerian, 1 Ghanaian. Ghanaian. Yes. I joined them last year. So, and this is my voyage, of first voyage. Are you regretting your action? I didn't know that I'm, I'm about to go and load the crude oil. They didn't tell me. So the chatter is not. Know, how do you feel? I felt bad because. Uh, my people are told me feel disappointed and anyway I believe God will take me out of this. Tell us why we are here, sir. Okay, good. We're here because of uh, a criminal ship that has terrorized Nigeria's economic um, sovereignty in terms of uh, maritime for over 10 years. And uh, we've been able to bring that particular vessel or ship called Ali. Riza Bay, uh, whom later turned his name into Turatu, uh, to book. That's why we're here today. And uh, we've been after this vessel for a very, very long time. Uh, it's been frequenting quite a lot of platforms and uh, jackets here and there. It's operated by a company called Holab Maritime Services. And uh, somehow, somewhere, uh, via satellite intelligence and also human intelligence afloat, we've been able to apprehend this vessel off Ondo State. And uh, we brought the vessel here 
for you all to see. Tell us about the suspect. Okay, good. Now, precisely 10 years ago, this vessel was arrested. Okay. When it was arrested, it was handed over to law enforcement. The crew was also taken by the EFCC. Uh, but we are not too sure what happened. But somehow, somewhere, it escaped. And uh, when it escaped, it was quite uh, funny what it did. It changed its name from Ali Riza Bay to Turatu and uh, got some intelligent people to register it internationally as a Nigerian flagship. Uh, we turned the ship upside down, more or less we've looked every nook and corner. There's no document or any evidence showing that this vessel is a Nigerian registered ship. It is actually a Togolese registered vessel being operated by Nigerians. So at the time of arrest, were there any products? There was, yes. What, what we did was that it's not the first time it's been stealing products. In 2016 precisely, it carried some crude oil and then the owners feigned a piracy attack on the vessel. So the so-called pirates were able to take this boat into the ocean and we suspect they went and pumped the crude oil they had to a foreign ship which took it overseas. Now notoriously, this vessel's ports of call have been Tema in Ghana, I repeat again Ghana, which seems to surface in terms of this illegality and also in Cameroon. It has also been doing ship to ship transfer. In this particular situation, we had to allow the ship to be able to steal before we apprehend them. And due to the current uh, actions by the NNPC for us to police the pipelines and all of that, they found it very difficult to come into the creeks to carry out these acts. But now they are concentrating more on the jackets in the ocean and the platforms in the ocean. So in this case, they went to a particular platform off Ondo State, a jacket precisely, and then connected their hoses, which you will see when we get there on deck, you will see them, into the jacket. And on connecting to these jackets, they started pumping the oil. So we didn't want them to pump so much into the ship. I think so far so good. They've got probably better part, uh, 150, uh, possibly that much, 150,000 liters or something like that. That's probably what they have. He was arrested early hours of, uh, I think, uh, early hours of Saturday, if I am not mistaken. Because their yeah, modus operandi is to come in about 9 o'clock in the night and then depart about 4.30 in the morning. We were able to get there before they departed. Any collaboration between the, or the synergy between the security? Yes, there has been a lot. As I keep saying, we can't do this job without uh, uh, the... Uh, government security agencies. In this case, we are heavily assisted by the Nigerian army from the 3 Battalion and also the Nigerian Civil Defense. They did back us up because, you know, we are a private security firm. We're not allowed to carry arms or ammunition, so we can't do without the government security agencies in this. So we've got quite a fair bit of backup. But I want to say something here. Uh, there's so much attention on the crew, and it is of our opinion, the executive management, which means the chairman, the vice chairman, the managing director, and the um, executive management, that attention should focus on the owners or those sponsoring these nefarious acts or notorious acts. They are inglorious. So it's time attention should shift to them. The crew is not really the problem. The crew are coerced or one way or the other, cajoled into doing this. Some of them think they are on an innocent mission, but actually the adventure is inglorious. So it is time attention shifts to looking at the employees, employers, perpetrators, because this particular ship has been stealing not only locally, but it is only also at the same time giving this to foreigners, and we know those foreigners. So it is high time we go after them as well. So what's your advice to those who still want to go on perpetrating this act of this My advice is for them to stop, okay, because uh, in as much as they are not going to sleep, we are also not going to sleep because we have to protect this country. So we are not going to sleep also. And you can see the boats everywhere. It's a clear sign that the Nigerian government forces are also not relenting in the matter. So they are going to meet us dollar for dollar in this particular business if they want to continue. However, having said all of this also, I will advise those who are intending to invest their ships in Nigerian waters from the international waters that you will not get away. You will lose your asset. If you give any Nigerian a ship 
to come and perpetrate crime, I guarantee you, you are going to lose your asset because the Nigerian government is not going to take it lightly with you. And with NNPC on it, NNPC is very, very active now, uh, just like they were before, but they have quite a lot of powers to ensure that your asset is not going to be safe in Nigerian waters in as much as it is oil that you came to collect illegally. Um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Rear Admiral Olusha Ferreira, Commander Operation Delta Safe. Okay, sir, sir, just tell us why we are here today. Okay, this afternoon, we are here to... We are here on a visit to a rogue vessel that was involved in theft of our natural resource, in theft of crude oil off the coast of uh, Escravos, not too far from here. We had credible information from our partners in progress, our private surveillance companies that have worked in synergy with um, forces of Operation Delta Sif, which comprises the armed forces, the civil defense, the Nigerian customs, immigration, EFCC, NSCDC, um, and a host of other agencies, all geared towards attaining the mandate of OPDS, which is the protection of oil and grass infrastructure within the Niger Delta for economic activities to thrive. On assumption of office of the current Chief of Defense Staff, General C.G. Musa, he reiterated the resolve of the armed forces and indeed the whole of the stakeholders within the area to continue the fight against criminalities in the Niger Delta area, against our common patrimony, and this includes um, illegal bunkering, pipeline vandalism, crude oil theft, and the likes. And this has been achieved largely in synergy with a host of stakeholders, which I have listed earlier. And most importantly, we have at the front end our partners who provide the intelligence for us to carry out our kinetic functions as the armed forces. So on Friday, largely based on credible intelligence that this vessel, MT Tura 2, was involved in theft of crude oil from an abandoned wellhead off the coast of Escravos. And the vessel was promptly arrested and brought to this location for all to see. I have here with me representatives from the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, representatives of the pipeline security companies known as Tantita. I have my officers here from OPDS and other agencies. All of these eventually portray the synergy in our operations, which has been the directives from higher authority. As you can see, we're all here represented, representing our various agencies as regards this um, arrest that was made. So what's the next like now for action? Well, we have the harmonized terms and conditions and uh, standard operating procedures. When a vessel involved in such of crime is arrested, the suspects are taken into custody, investigations are ongoing, the product on board is taken for test by NMPC or DPR, and thereafter, once the investigation is concluded, the next appropriate actions are taken. They could be prosecuted in court, and of course, the vessel will be handled in accordance with extant directives. So where are the suspects? The suspects are undergoing investigation. When, um, when was the uh, vessel arrested? On Friday, 7th of July. So we understand that the, the crew uh, is made up of people from different uh, nationalities. So what, what countries are involved? They are all Nigerians. Well, we will learn that this uh, ship came from uh, Tema in Ghana. Well, as of now, I don't have that information. So we understand so the ship has changed its name from... Uh, who is asking the question? Say again. In line with appropriate standard operating procedures, the vessel will be handled appropriately. Thank you.